This week on Engineering Newswire, we're being chased down by animal-like robots, designing a zombie survival machine, breaking the women's land speed record, and using gems to better breathalyzers. Remember that frighteningly animal-like robot from Boston Dynamics? Big Dog? Well, now the organization has unveiled Wildcat. This new, smaller derivative of Big Dog can run up to 16 miles per hour on flat terrain, using both bounding and galloping gates, meaning it looks even more like a creepy, robotic animal. Though you won't be uh, sneaking up on anybody with the robot's chainsaw-like motor, this thing can move quickly, and, well, the chainsaw sound only adds to the frightening dynamic that a robot is running towards you. Wildcat is being developed with funding from DARPA's M3 program, so they are hoping to use the technology for emergency response and aid scenarios. The Wildcat actually has more in common with the organization's Cheetah concept robot. But unlike the Cheetah, this thing is untethered. The goal is to make the robot move fast on varying terrain, which, again, is just frightening. But awesome! But frightening. At this year's Comic Con in New York, Hyundai will bring a fan-designed zombie survival machine to life. Awesome! Who is the lucky winner? Arizona-based Anson Kual, whose Santa Fe design was picked out of more than 82,500 fan submissions. Yeah, 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 good for him. Let's get to the car. This urban camouflage design is aimed for effective undead annihilation, featuring knife blades, an automatic crossbow, razor-wired windows, not one, not two, but three machine guns, a samurai sword, which I totally call dibs on, aluminum armor, and a muffler silencer. Who wouldn't want the apocalypse to come? Sign me up. Quao's mission was to create a stealthy vehicle with abundant cargo space for supplies and passengers, maximizing survivability against the undead. According to Quao, having knives as a primary weapon ensures scarce ammunition is conserved, making this little Honda a true zombie obliterator. I call shotgun. Jesse Combs, an automotive metal fabricator and TV host for All Girls Garage and Autoblog, broke the women's land speed record on Tuesday, reaching an average two-way speed of 344 miles per hour, passing the previous record that was set in 1965 by nearly 36 miles per hour. Combs drove the North American Eagle Supersonic Speed Challenger, a 14,000 pound, 50,000 horsepower converted F-104 Lockheed Starfighter jet a vehicle that used to serve as a chase plane for the X-15 and SR-71C. The key element was the afterburner mode, which nearly doubles the thrust of the jet engine. The vehicle's owners and team of volunteers boast that the vehicle was designed to reach speeds upwards of 800 miles per hour, a task which the team will put to test when Ed Shadle attempts to break the land speed record of 763 miles per hour in 2014. Police officers traditionally stick to field sobriety tests and breathalyzers to see if you're drunk behind the wheel. But most breathalyzers are expensive and don't even test for precise concentrations. Well now, Italian researchers have developed a novel idea that uses opal, a type of gemstone, for inexpensive portable breathalyzers that change from green to red. The more booze, the more you see red. It would actually make for much more functional mood rings. The design uses Opal's sensing properties to detect the gas version of ethanol by inducing a visible change in color. Ethanol is the intoxicating component that makes most booze hounds howl. I'm drunk! <laughs> the researchers created sheets of manufactured Opal about one centimeter square and a few hundred billionths of a meter thick. It's as thin as a soap bubble. The Opals are pumped full of gel tuned to respond to ethanol vapor. At increasing ethanol concentrations, the gel swells, changing the way light travels through the gel-filled opal and causing the sample to become red. The change in color is clearly visible and the device is reusable. And since it doesn't react to acetone, it's immune to the many false positives registered by other breathalyzers. Ah, oh, am, am I right to drive? Yeah, but... Oh no. Yeah, no, no you're driving. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.